Welcome to Analytics with Nax. This is another video in the SQL Advanced topic where I'm going to talk about change tracking. One of the niche topic used in the data warehousing world um, while loading the incremental data, but most of them is not aware. That's why I thought of making one video for it. Let's try to understand this. Before that, uh, for prerequisite, if you want to follow this uh, video or practice it, you should have basic understanding about SQL and SQL joins. And if you don't have any of the softwares, please utilize this link. I will provide it in the description to install and practice along with me. So let's come back to our topic, change tracking. It is a lightweight solution for tracking changes in the database. Also widely used for the incremental ETL processes. Earlier, we had a triggers and timestamp column to load the uh, incremental changes or in order to update uh, some other database. So this has overcome those challenges. So main purpose is to identify what row has changed in a table, right? If you have a table, well, let's say 1 million records, whether it has been changed or not, right? What row has been changed? And uh, how it is changed, whether it is uh, updated or inserted or deleted, either one of the operations should happen, right? So that is what this is going to do. This is the main purpose of this uh, change tracking. Based on these changes, the next process will begin. How you use that changes in your application, that is the another way you will handle it. For the purpose of this video, we will try to understand how the change tracking works and the basic um, queries like ins why I will insert and delete and update, how this looks like in your um, change tracking tables. That's what I'm going to show. Then in uh, uh, upcoming videos, I will detail it with how you can apply it, right? That is the use case of it in the data warehousing or the ETL process that we will check it out. With this note, let's try to understand the example, what we are going to see today. So I have a source system here, like person.employee or person. Uh, some other table. Uh, this is for the example, right? So I have this table and I want to load this table incrementally. Let's say it's a very big organization. Every day, thousands of employees are being added or the changes are updated. They don't want to disturb in this database. They want to just move the data to another server. For that, uh, earlier, like they need to use some time stopping, some other technology, right? Now, whatever data has been changed, either inserted, updated, deleted, those are the changes to this template table. Those will be tracked in this change tracking table. Then using this table, we will read in the data arrows or any reporting solution. This is what this change tracking table is all about. How to enable it and how it looks like that is what we're going to see as part of this video then in our upcoming video we will see the data arrows part that's it so with this note what i'm trying to see here is uh, this channel contains a free content that covers msbi power bi and fundamentals of azure please utilize this free content share this channel with your friends and colleagues let's begin our today's topic so in order to do that i will move on to uh, my um, uh, sql server that is in ssms right now we have a sql server here and we have the adventure works so toward this demo i will use um, adventure works as my source and i'm going to uh, put it in my target either one of in this database but today we will try to enable the change tracking how the change tracking table will look like here right that's what we are going to see in our upcoming videos we will try to load the data using different technologies either ssis or data factory to load it using this change tracking so what it is now let's see the change tracking i have uh, over here I'm going to use these two functions change tracking current version and change state tables when I run this one I don't get anything right for that I need to enable change tracking first meaning I need to enable the change tracking so go here change tracking true 
and retention period let's say i want to retain for seven days this is the ideal case i would suggest so basically any changes in this database will be uh, retained for seven days right that is at the database level enabling at the database is the first step you need to enable for all the tables you want to track changes right for the purpose of this demo i will use the person dot um, employee right we saw that person dot employee in our example i think it's human resource i'm not sure uh where is that yeah here here it is so let's try to check this rows even in this table i need to enable the change tracking so i need to enable the change tracking at the database level then the second step is to enable the change tracking at the table level individual table level you can use the scripting this script can be used to generate uh, across multiple tables so it's not so i have this uh, table right now right similarly you can have all the tables listed here like just executed in a one shot that is also possible right now uh, i have enabled in the gui that's why it's showing error here so now i enable the change tracking for the uh, one table that is employee now when you go and check the change tracking here it is zero earlier it showed null now it becomes zero now what it mean as i said before you need to do some operations here right then there will be a uh, versions will be keep on incrementing for that any changes so change tracking is not per table it is per database let's say i enable change tracking for this table also right so you are doing update of uh, employee two records and you are doing update of uh, any five records here your change tracking will be seven across the database it is not per table okay it is per database that is what uh, the one of the important point i want to mention now coming back to here so this is my uh, data let me try to update uh, the um, what do you call the uh, let's say higher date is wrongly entered right for him so let me uh, update it for um this particular national id i will use the business entity id that will be much better be with me for a minute or i can go and edit it here that will be very quick right so let's update it to 11 itself here then that's it now i updated the record right and uh, let's go and check the change tracking version now you can see this is one right now let us update another record like salaried flag right i will say true for him there you go i will uh, select once again select version 2 so basically this function give me any changes happening in the database it will keep on increasing now how can i query what are the changes uh, that has been made right let's see here i am putting this change table version this is the syntax change table changes human resource employee now this particular table contains so many records right so let's say i have 290 records but i have updated two records so this function this syntax will give me what are the changes happen okay you see here 12 and 29 right these two records i have updated now this is the uh, updated record now i mean i updated from here to enter so that why it came uh, 30 here so 29 entity id and 12 so if you can realize it what this entity id is stored here right basically a particular table should contain the primary key that primary key is stored as part of your change tracking table this is the one of the important point i want to highlight you so using this information how your application can read right the incremental data so let's say i want to uh, read these two operation you see here 
you that is the update operation happen that's why you are getting this 12 and 29 i will add uh, those changes here right i mean I, I want to query this changes here so when i put this changes here with the right outer join of this particular table again right p and ct and here you should use the primary key each table based on the table you query this will be changing right in this case it is um, business entity because business entity is the primary key in other case uh, another table it will be different the change tracking will be uh, having a, its own primary key so now you can see based on this information I can able to extract right what information has been changed so when you go back to the definition here uh, what has row has changed there are uh, two rows has been changed how it is changed it is changed by a update operation there are other operations when you have a deleted that also will be preserved that primary key also preserved there will be another record it will be D if there is an insert it will be I so for the benefit of time of this video I don't want to make a long video on this this is to make you aware uh, what is a change tracking is and how this works and what is the prerequisite and then how you can utilize leverage this in your other applications if you like this video comment below so that I can make a detailed video on this change tracking process and then explain how we will utilize in any one of the applications if you're new to this channel hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification and do remember that data is your asset.